Thank you for joining Preparing for Roma Next Generation and the CSBG Annual Report, focusing on Module 4, Individual and Family Level. Our presenters today are Jeannie Chapin, Director of the Office of Community Services, Jenny Bialen, Executive Director of the National Association for State Community Services Programs, Lauren Cook, CSBG Team Lead, and Barbara Mooney, Director of the Association of Nationally Certified Roma Trainers. Again, we'll be focusing on Module 4 of the CSBG Annual Report on Individual and Family Level Work. Thank you, Lauren. So we're going to delve a little deeper in this module into how we measure family or individual level change. Individual Individuals and families often come to community action agencies for services to meet a critical, immediate need, and we believe that we must help to stabilize them, at least for a short-term period, before we can move to help them to achieve economic security. And so we have national performance indicators that look at uh, stability and helping people meet basic needs and demonstrating what community action agencies achieve in that area. Individuals and families often are experiencing need in multiple domains. So maybe there's food, housing, or employment needs that we meet. And we are going to talk a little bit about uh, measuring across multiple domains in this, in this new report. As individuals and families achieve outcomes in one or more multiple domains, they're able to meet their family's basic needs. So previously, our reporting for um, families and individuals included a mix of outcomes and outputs. And we've done some cleanup on that in this version of the annual report, and we'll show you that a little bit more uh, later in the webinar. We also recognize that it takes many years to reach an outcome, like post-secondary education. So the CAA's work isn't seen in every report. It may just be seen in the last report, uh, in the current reporting period, depending on what the indicator is. So this new report seeks to develop um, and flesh out some components uh, that are really important to achieving our overall long-term goals, and that's a little bit more uh, uh, about outcomes. We're adding services into the report, and then, of course, we've always had information about people. Um, with Roma Next Generation and this annual report, we're trying to create the components that a community action agency would be able to use to connect um, the people served, what service they get to a particular outcome. So just some examples here. The outcomes that we often look at, you all are very familiar with this across the network, are obtaining jobs, completing an education, securing housing. Those are all indicators in um, the National Performance Indicators section. Services, which are new, and we'll talk a little bit more about those later, could be anything from job training, work experience, housing counseling, or food assistance. And then we collect a lot of, of information about the characteristics of the people we serve, what income they may have, what their job status might be. And so we have the elements here uh, to be able to connect up to see what really works and to understand for particular services what we might need to improve. So in this webinar, we're going to look at Section A, which is related to all the individual and family national performance indicators. We're going to look at Section B, which includes services to individuals and families, and then Section C, which is the characteristics report that collects data and demographic information about the people served by each community action agency. So in this slide, again, as we've done in our previous modules, we've given you a side-by-side -side of what uh, the current annual report looks like as far as each section for this Module 4 and then what the CSBGIS survey, where that information might be found in the IS survey. So, of course, a lot of NPI information in the IS survey now, and much of it will be um, found in the Section A, where the NPIs are found now. And the change that we really have here is some of the um, previous NPIs that were really not outcomes, that were really outputs, 
will be found in the individual and family services section, which is section B. And then um, section C of our current report maps to section G of the CSBGIS survey. We've made a few changes on the characteristics report as far as new data elements around veterans or uh, work status, but that report is uh, predominantly unchanged from uh, the CSPGIS survey. And then the last thing I wanted to highlight for you in this webinar before I hand it over to colleagues is what we have actually changed in this last version of the annual report that's being commented on in the final comment period versus the report that was previously uh, uh, commented on. And, and the most significant of, of those changes would be that we've removed the characteristics for new individuals and households report. This was a report that we got a lot of comments would be um, quite challenging for community action agencies. And so it was determined that the best strategy would be just to remove that report. We've also revised the instructions uh, to indicate that the reporting on indicators tracking outcomes for 90 or 180 days, those were around jobs and housing. Um, we've clarified that you only track 90 and 180 days if that's part of your program design. And I think folks will talk about that more here in a moment. And then finally, um, the indicators that we were proposing around uh, stability, uh, we've, we've eliminated those. We have moved those indicators into some different sections that make more, more sense, but we're not proposing any indicators specifically um, as demonstrating uh, that stability has been achieved. So those are the major changes in this section that we think um, really make a difference on, uh, on how complicated this annual report will be, um, but we also think it includes a lot of good things that move the network forward. So with that, I'm going to, uh, I think, hand it over to Barbara uh, to highlight um, some additional uh, aspects of the new report. Thanks, um, thanks Jeannie. Uh, yes, we're looking at uh, the national performance indicators providing uh, a measure, a means to measure the achievement of the movement that uh, families and individuals make towards their long-term goals. and. Um, they, they also will document the number of people who received the services and the number of people who achieved an outcome because we know both of those things are important. It also provides data that we're going to be um, helping to think about analysis uh, as we move forward so that we know um, what change was expected, what change happened, and how does the actual comp uh, change compare with what was expected? How accurate were the projections? And, and finally, on this page, the important piece is what percent of the people that were served actually achieved an outcome. And that's all fuel for the data analysis process that will be a part of our performance management going forward. Um, we want to stress again and again that agencies only report on the NPIs that are relevant to their work, uh, to achieving the goals and the outcomes that they have set based on the local needs and local conditions that they assess. Um, there's not a mandate to, to use any of the proposed indicators, but the National Performance Indicators provides this set of standardized indicators, and these indicators have been effective um, for many years as we have been reporting on individual and family outcomes. The um, family and uh, individual indicators are also organized by domains. Uh, the, you, you see, you've seen that in the agency module, you've seen that in the uh, community module, and again here in this module, we're looking at the same set of domains with the same language. Employment, education and cognitive development, income and asset building, housing, health and social behavior of development, civic engagement and community involvement, and then this outcomes across multiple domains, which is, uh, which is the addition uh, to this section. 
Um, you've heard the talk about the services list, and this will be found in the new annual report. There are a list of services that are related to each of the domain areas, and uh, these also have been um, reviewed by by the network many times, and uh, we we've clarified uh, a list of services that we believe covers the majority of things that, that we do across the country in community action. Again, this is important because in the previous reporting process, we had mixed outcomes and outputs together. The services were part of the National Performance Indicator reporting, and that has been uh, fixed in this in this report with the services list separated. This will help us better tell the story so that we know the services that are created that produce the outcomes that have been reported. Um, and, and as I said, the domains are arranged uh, to match the, um, the the services list is um, arranged to match the outcome list, and this is the same list that we've just talked about. Um, we also want to know about the people, uh, as we said earlier, that, that who is it, who is it is receiving these services and who are achieving these outcomes. And so there's always been a demographic um, characteristics report and um, that's included in this report. And we want to know how many people have been served by the community action agencies across the country. Um, there's an expectation that we'll have unduplicated counts and um, you'll see that there, there are some modifications in the report forms to help you talk about what, what hap what's happening with some of your um, services that you've been unable to uh, unduplicate in your, in your count report. In the, in the All Characteristics Report, we've added some new categories, some things that reflect the, uh, the way we look at demographics in, in the 21st century, um, and this has all, all been information that was provided to us from the field. So we're going to look at the, uh, the actual forms, and I'm going to turn this over to you today. When we look at this form, I do want to point out that this is an end report. We know that many states and local agencies have their own unique data collection systems and processes for gathering information. But when we are creating the CCG annual report, we've been really um, looking at how we can streamline the reporting, make it easier to find everything, and just have it make sense. So as Barbara had mentioned, all of the indicators are now listed by domain. So you have all of the housing indicators under housing. When you are doing your Roma cycle and you're doing your community needs assessment, let's say your local agency realizes that you have a homeless issue. And so in your community needs assessment, you are going to work as an agency to have programs that are going to work with homeless to obtain safe temporary shelter that you want to be able to then have them have um, safe and affordable housing and maintain that housing for 90 and 180 days. You report your target in your community action plan to your state about how many people you were hoping to obtain safe and temporary shelter. Let's say you had 100. Then you would report actually who was served and what the actual results were. This is very, very similar to what we have already been reporting on in the CCGIS. So the number of participants served, you may have 1,000 individuals who are looking for safe and temporary um, shelter, but you only have 500 bed spots. So that would be your actual result. Everything else would be auto-calculated. We had a lot of concern and comments made during the comment period about the tracking over time, the 90 to 180 days. I want to reinforce that you would only report, in this instance, those who maintain safe and affordable housing for 90 and 100 days, 180 days, if that is part of your project already. If it's not part of your project, you just report on the data that you have. Another really important thing for us is that when we did an analysis of all of the Roma goals that were being reported uh, back in early 2000s to create the National Performance Indicators, we had a pretty good idea of all of the work that Community Action was doing, but we knew that we were missing some. So 2004-2005, we released National Performance Indicators. Now we're going through an overhaul again. And some of the areas that we've added 
were because we had this other housing outcome indicator, other employment outcome indicator. And we saw that there are multiple local agencies and states reporting on this and that we were missing them so we can add them to our report. For the other indicators, this would be something that a local community action agency would work with their state to identify and review all the national performance indicators. And if there is not one that fits their needs, they can do other and report it here. And then at the national level, we'll be looking at these. So for the next OMB clearance process in three years, if there's a lot that are similar, we can look at enhancing the outcome indicator list. It is incredibly important to really reinforce that you only report on indicators that you're doing. And that, again, for the 90 and 180 days, if you have a program that, that is part of your case management wraparound services that you're going to do follow-up, then you report it. If it's not, you don't report this. We've had people say, oh, for information or referral calls, am I supposed to follow up with them? No, not if they're part, if they haven't been enrolled into a program. So really for all of this, these are um, a list of measures that you get to choose on and you only report on the measures that make sense for your program. With outcomes across multiple domains, the number of individuals who achieve one or more outcomes as identified by the national performance indicators in various domains we had a lot of conversation over the past couple of years knowing that when we see individuals and families in our local community action agencies, they usually access more than one service. And that we wanted to know how many were being able to achieve multiple outcomes. This used to be listed as a stability indicator. It's not a stability indicator right now. Right now it's just one that you choose. And so if your local agency and state have processes in place, or planning type processes in place that you can gather this information, we ask that you do report on it. We want to know how many achieve one or more outcomes across the board. Next, we have our family services. Um, if you've been listening to our other modules, you'll know that we really looked at all of the current national performance indicators, and we found that there was a mixture of outputs, which are really services and outcomes. And it was a request to the network as we were going through this process of creating this new CCGN report to separate those out. So we have a list of services that are traditional services that community action agencies offer um, that connect up to the people in the outcomes in local agencies. In this report, it is a standalone services report, and you can see that you, do, you would be reporting on the underpaid number of individuals served. This is an example of a current CCGIS report. This is National Performance Indicator 1.2, so you should all hopefully be very familiar with this. This is the employment support. And where you see all of the blue arrows, this is our National Performance Indicator report. But as I had just referenced, we had a lot of services mixed in with our outcomes. So everywhere that you see a blue, area, a blue arrow is an actual service that is now in the services list and not in the outcomes report. I'm going to now turn it over to Lauren, who's going to review the characteristics report. Thanks, Janae. Um, so as you look at the all characteristics report, it should look very familiar um, and a lot like Section G that you currently report in in the CSB GIS. You'll see at the top of the form, uh, we ask for the total unduplicated number of all individuals, and that's in row A. And then in row B, we ask for the unduplicated number of all households. Um, in row B. Um, so section C, individual level characteristics, um, lists many of the same uh, demographic categories that are in section G. Um, there are some additions, such as military status. Um, you'll also see in number three, education levels. Um, we do now ask about education levels for individuals uh, ages 25 and older. We also have a new category on work status number eight. Um, and then there are some variations within the demographic categories where we've changed some of the data points. Um, so if you look at age, we've um, kind of expanded some of the um, age categories, especially for older adults. And then in the um, second part of the form, we ask about household level characteristics. Um, you'll see uh, on this screen, number 15, non-cash benefits. Um, this is a newer category where we ask about some of those benefits like SNAP, WIC, LIHEAP, et cetera. Um, number 12 should look very familiar um, in terms of what you're reporting in Section G. 
And then you'll see at the bottom of the page, we have rows E and F. Um, so these were added because we heard a lot of concern about um, some situations where data collection systems cannot really communicate together. Um, so you wouldn't be able to get an unduplicated count across programs. So maybe um, with WIOA or Head Start, um, you wouldn't be able to differentiate those participants um, from other programs that you're working with. So now you have the opportunity um, to list the unduplicated of number of individuals or households for each of those programs. Um, so while you might not be able to report them um, in the other part of the form, you could list the program name and then the number of individuals or households served um, in this part of the form. Now I'll turn it over to Jeannie to wrap this up. Thanks, Lauren. So we think that one of the ways to really um, think about the, uh, what we're proposing in the annual report is to take your data from your last reporting period and try putting it into the new uh, annual report. And so, you know, looking at what data you have and how that would fit in the new report. And then what data maybe did you not put in the previous report, but you would want to collect and report in this report because there's some new, new aspects. Um, what outcomes and services uh, can you report uh, that you haven't reported in the past? We think it's worth uh, thinking a little bit about that. And we think that's a really good exercise for you to uh, perform before you complete your 30-day comments. Um, as uh, hopefully you know, we are in the final days of the final comment period for the annual report. Um, we need everybody to submit their comments uh, before the end of the month to be assured that those comments will be uh, reviewed by OMB before they issue a final decision on the annual report. And I also want to just um, make a note that if there are things you really like about the changes, that it's uh, also good to make comments about what is useful uh, and what you like about the report. So uh, we have on the final slide, the uh, address for submitting comments, and those do go directly to OMB. And we have the address for submitting questions is as you're looking at this or uh, thinking about uh, the data that you have in your agency and how that might be reported, if you run into a question, um, feel free to send that question to the email address listed here, and we'll get back to you. Um, also, easy to reach out uh, by phone to OCS or to NASCAS, and we'll be happy uh, to have a chat about any of the uh, issues in the annual report. We appreciate you listening today and taking a really serious uh, review of all the modules in the annual report uh, and encourage you uh, to sign into future webinars that we'll be having uh, throughout the rest of November. Thank you.